In this video, I'm going to discuss some of the reactions of epoxides, which are a particular type of ether that form a three-membered ring with the oxygen in it. And so some of this will be review, but there will be some new concepts here as well. So as part of the review, we can do synthesis of epoxides using these peroxy acids. MCPBA and MMPP are two very common ones to use. And so we go through this reaction right here where we have an alkene and our peroxy acid. And the electrons from the alkene go to this oxygen while the electrons from this OH bond go to this carbon right here. These electrons move around so that we end up with this transition state right here. And then we end up with this epoxide and this acid right here. So again, that is review from our alcohol videos. But another interesting one is this base promoted cyclization of halohydrins. So we have this halohydrin here where the halogen can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And we have this base here. This will take that hydrogen right there. The electrons go to that oxygen and we end up with this right here then this oxygen can actually attack that carbon right there. This halogen leaves, and so we end up with this epoxide right here. And this has now become water. And so one problem with this is that we see that we can get a lot of side reactions with it. So we could have this right here go and take this hydrogen in an E2 reaction where that will collapse down there. Or we could have this actually do an SN2 reaction on that carbon. And so a lot of times what we want to do is use a base that looks kind of like this. So we have this 2,6-dimethylpyridine, and this is bulky enough that it's not going to go after the carbon. So this will actually just go after this hydrogen right here. Those go to that oxygen, so we end up with this alkoxide. This can then go after that carbon there, and so those will leave right there with that chloride. And so we end up with this 2 methyl tetrahydrofuran right here, which isn't an epoxide, but it is an ether, and we could do this as well with epoxides. Another bit of review here from our alcohol videos is acid-catalyzed epoxide opening. So we can have this epoxide right here. This will take a hydrogen from the acid. The electrons go to that oxygen right there. So we end up with this protonated epoxide. And then there are two ways we can do this. So we could have this water or an alcohol come in. It's going to go after the more substituted carbon right there. These electrons go to that oxygen. So we end up with this. We then have the water take that hydrogen right there. So that deprotonates it. So we end up with this propane-1,2-diol or propylene glycol. And obviously you could do this with other types of hydrocarbon chains as well, but this one is nice for showing that this more substituted carbon right here is going to be the one that actually gets attacked by the nucleophile. We can also do this down here where we end up with our protonated epoxide right here. Then this bromide here, so maybe we're using hydrobromic acid, comes and attacks that carbon right there. Those electrons go to the oxygen, so we end up with this 2-bromopropanol. Then we could actually protonate this again right there, so that takes the hydrogen it gets protonated, then we could have the bromide come and attack that carbon right there so that that ends up leaving and we end up with this 1,2-dibromopropane. So that was all review from our alcohol videos, but now we can also do base-catalyzed epoxide opening. So the reason we can do this is compared to the ether, we have a much smaller activation energy right here and this is going to be an exothermic reaction where our reactants have a higher energy than the products, and so that will make this favorable. The mechanism for this is that we have this hydroxide right here, or we can do it with an alkoxide right here, and this will actually come, and this will attack the less hindered carbon right there, rather than the more stable carbon. So we end up with this as an intermediate. We bring in another water, and that will then protonate this oxygen right here. The Mechanism is pretty much the same thing for the alkoxide, so that comes and binds right there. We put in another alcohol right here. This will then protonate from there, and so we end up with this ether right here. 
And so what we see is that the unsymmetrical epoxide can produce different products under acid catalyzed and base catalyzed conditions. So what we saw with the acid catalyzed was that we got the product where the ether ended up on the more substituted carbon, where with the base catalyzed we ended up with the ether on the less substituted carbon. And so in base catalyzed the nucleophile just simply goes for the less hindered carbon, where in acid catalyzed the nucleophile goes to the carbon that carries the most positive charge, and so will go to the more substituted carbon despite steric hindrance. So that's what we see right here. We have our resonance structures. This one right here is going to be the major resonance structure since this ends up with the positive charge right here on the more substituted carbon. So we bring in our alcohol that will attack that carbon right there and we end up with the ether on our more substituted carbon. And so one way that epoxides are used is in these epoxy resins. In fact, if you've never heard of these epoxide groups, you have probably heard of epoxide resins. And so one of them here uses this epichlorohydrin and bisphenol A right here. So this is our epoxide monomer right here. And so what's going on is we have our bisphenol A, which I've just kind of truncated right here. This will come and attack that carbon right there. Those electrons go to that oxygen, so we end up with this right here. This oxygen will then do a ring closure on that carbon right there. The chloride leaves, and so we end up with this right here. We bring that down, bring in another one of our bisphenol A's. This then attacks that carbon right there. Those go up to there, and so we end up with this right here. And we can then do that another time. So we bring in another one of these monomers here that goes up there. We'll have another ring closure as that goes down there. And so we can do this over and over and over again until we get our polymer right here. So we have some number here of these polymer chains. And so we end up with the epoxides on the terminal ends right here. And so then what we can do is add what's called a hardener. And so these are often polyamines like this. So we have our long chain one. So say this epoxide right here is this epoxide right here. We have our long chain one going on into the distance. And so this amine will come and attack that carbon right there. Those electrons go up to there. And so we end up with this right here. We can then have this oxygen come and attack that carbon there on another chain. So chain two here. And so we have now combined two chains together. We can then do this on a third chain right here. And so we've now added three chains together. And then these multiple arrows here just means that we do this over and over and over again. We can also do this within a chain. So now we're looking at somewhere in the middle of chain one. So we would be looking at a hydroxyl group like this right here that's somewhere in this long chain. So we now have this come here and deprotonate that oxygen. So we end up with this alkoxide right here. This comes and attacks right there on another chain. And so we end up with this. We do this over and over and over again. And so we end up with a big complex structure that looks like this. And so that will actually turn our liquid polymer into this multi-branched solid polymer here. And so there are multiple different types of epoxy resins. The one I was showing here was using the bisphenol A, but there are other types that use other molecules, and there are also different types of hardener. But I'm not going to get too much into that because this isn't a polymer playlist. This is an organic chemistry playlist. But this is just one way that epoxides are often used. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.